Hey guys, Merry Christmas, Got Yule, Hanukkah's over, Happy Festivus. Um, I'm trying to remember what else is around this date, but you know, Happy Holidays. So, yeah. Um, note, the map. We now have the map, because I had people asking me, well, where are some of these things and what, and so on and so forth. So, yes, this is the map. It's actually a nice little National Geographic map. Uh, it's like a few years old. Really nice. But yes, the map. So I can now point to it and tell you about a story that happened in this tiny... It's a town. I think it has a mayor. Um, called Estevan. Now we were... Got a phone call about some weirdness that was happening. Now, typically weirdness will either be like, you know, people disappearing or crops failing or... This was weird... You know, you can have weather radar. This is sort of like the magical radar um, that H, basically, Department H just kind of has. I don't know how they find some of this shit, but it's the same thing when I had to go <laughs> up there <laughs> um, for the undead and over there. Um, for the Wahiva. Well, the zombies, which the Wahiva took care of for me, thankfully. Um, yes, motion's back. But yes, um, yeah, a little bit of a magic radar takes us to Estevan, Saskatchewan. Um, right down by the American border, and it's not that long of a drive. <laughs> you can do it in a day. Anyways, drive down there. And um, there's already someone on the ground. It's actually a community member. And uh, it was sort of kind of like a subject matter expert where I'm used to zombies. This guy's used to uh, local folklore. Esteban's kind of on the ley lines. Weirdness that can happen there, apparently. So this guy's family's lived there for generations. There's a lot of uh, what you'll find, like, um, cultural mixing in Canada, and Estevan had a lot of Scandinavians and Germanics, and I guess this one particular person had uh, an idea that he was going to make all the things that belonged to a god, and then become that god. And that god was Thor. So he decided he was going to start with what he figured would be the easiest part, Thor's goats. Now, Thor's goats, which I think are Biter and Nasher, or Teak Nasher, I'm not even going to try and say them. Um, I have a book here that would probably tell me what their names are in Swedish or Norwegian or Scandinavian, Old Norse, whatever. I'm not even going to try it. Um, but he could kill them and eat them, and then the next morning, so long as if I think the bones were still around, he could revive them. Now, revivification versus reanimation. There's something we kind of got to go over. Revivification is bringing them back whole, complete. Soul's not gone. They're basically, uh, here's your save point. You're bringing them back from that save point. That kind of thing. Reanimation is bringing back the dead, not quite the same. This guy was trying to revivify. Try saying that three times fast. I have managed to screw that up so many times. He was, he was trying to revivify, but he was reanimating instead. And if a return of the living dead has taught you anything, it should be that being dead hurts. And Mr. Meeseeks teaches you, yes, I'm making a Rick and Morty reference, that is a sense is pain. Um, so yeah, anyways, we had a uh, little issue where he kept reviving, but he was actually reanimating these goats over and over and over. Their souls would start to leave and then get dragged back, and yes, okay, animals have souls. Animus, an animus, if you are uncomfortable with animals having souls. Their animus was dragged back, and it drove them mad. And these aren't little, you know, bah, bah goats. They're like, 
easily this tall. Um, kind of like uh, bighorn sheep, goats, sheep, bighorn sheep. Um, but yeah, well, more like a mountain goat, truthfully. Um, but yeah, they were. Mm. Have anything I can show you that would be even close? No. Anyways, they were kind of nasty by the time he had finished with them. Um, so I guess his thought was he'd get them first, and then somehow he would get the belt, and then he'd get the gloves, and then he'd get the hammer, and then he'd be a god. Necromancers can be kind of fucked in the head. <laughs> I think you kind of have to be to be functionally able to work with undead or create them. There's been a couple of goodies um, that I've had to deal with, but this wasn't one of them. So yeah, anyways, we... Uh, I pull into town. Um, the coordinates that are given on the cell phone are just a little bit further south, kind of like I'm going down to the American border. Um, but if I remember correctly, the border crosses a little more west. Um, but yeah, go out, pull it, pull up to this little kind of cute little farm, and there's already a red pickup truck there. Um, Ford Ranger. Really nice Ford Ranger. Guy gets out. He's got a nice little, um, you know those, oh god, what was the character? Sheriff Galt, I think, from Rambo First Blood. He had that deer hide coat with like the sheep wool trim and everything. Um, this guy had that. Um, but like a, not the untanned look. Almost like a maroon. Anyways, pull in. He's there. <laughs> and we get this little back and forth where, you know, we're talking because, you know, I'm trying to get the lay of the land, what's going on here, and he's sort of like a local who knows some of the things that goes on, and he basically said, you know, he got a phone call that weird shit was happening, came here, and he could already kind of tell. In the back of his truck, big old kit bag, big old kit sack, basically. Um, I still had some of my stuff. I had a little Mikasa with a couple of um, kind of oopsie pouches, I call them. Um, magnesium, um, some salts, a few other things, and then a couple of other little things. I had my uh, inner tube filled with salt, um, standard big knife, folding knife, flashlight, pretty much my regular loadout. Um, this guy's like, you, you won't need any of that. You won't need anything. Pulls out bow and arrow. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know if you've ever hunted with a bow and arrow, but if you don't surprise the animal, odds are you're not going to hit the animal. Um, and I was fairly certain as we were going to start walking up the laneway, there was going to be a little bit of, uh, hey, something's coming. Anyways, he's got the bow and arrow. He hands me a wreath, a mistletoe wreath, and as soon as I looked at it, I'm like, I'm not kissing you right now. That club, little like knotted club, it was actually really cool, kind of like a blackthorn, I got my blackthorn cane over there, kind of like a blackthorn club, but this big. Um, and he's got a gold sickle. Might have been brass. Probably was brass, but it, it you know, it's freaking sickle. I'm like, okay. So we start walking down this laneway, and he tells me, okay, it feels like something that might have gone a little weird. And yeah, we walk down the laneway, out come the two goats. Demon fucking goats at this point. Driven insane. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had like a sheep or a ram come running at you, um, but you never want to really be near because it kind of hurts when they hit you. So these things start trotting towards us. Slightly unsteady, but you know, running towards us, pissed off, like snotting and not foaming, but lathering, basically. They look actually kind of like a lathered up horse. Um, if you shrunk it and put it in a pissed off goat's body. Bolting right at us. I run off to one side. He goes off to the other. 
and I shit you not, Nox draws and looses an arrow into the side of one of these goats. Which seemed to piss it off a little bit more, but it turns off and starts running towards him. False. Other one coming towards me. I'm on the other side of a fence. I'm thinking I'm okay. It's a nice big bolstered fence. Poof. Hits the fence. Fence falls over. Fuck. Run, 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 run. He screams out. Over here. Run towards him. Poof. Nails it. Right through the side again. Okay, awesome. I'm like, what the hell am I supposed to do? He tells me. Take the wreath. Put it over the goat's head. Down its neck. And tap it with the club. I'm like, tap it. Because I'm not used to tapping things with a club. I'm used to switching things with a club. No, tap it with the club. Hey. Big head. I'm like, these things are dead? He's like, yes. Lift it up. Slide it down. Dead weight, by the way. The head had to weigh like, head and neck probably was like, 40 pounds. Slide it down. Tap it on the head with the club. Okay, now what? Now do it to the other one. Okay. Trying to make sure, because the horns kind of go back like this, and you're trying to get it over. Pull it off. Do it to the other one. Tap it on the head. Okay, now what? That's it. They won't come back. Okay, great. Wonderful. We still have to deal with the necromancer. We didn't have to wait long. <laughs> Basically, farmhouse, door opens, out comes this little dumpy jackass wearing a cloak with, like, runic symbols around the neck and everything, and he just, what are you doing? My goat runs right towards us. I didn't think, but as he got really, really close, he really, really aggressive, I thumped him in the head with this, this stupid club. <laughs> And he fell down. And the guy who came over, by the way, is Nick. Was his name? <laughs> Nick just goes, okay, that's not the way I would have handled it, but that worked. I'm like, do I have to put the mistletoe wreath around his neck and thump in, in the head? No, 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 he'll be fine. Pulls out, roll of duct tape, tapes dude's hands, tapes dude's feet. We both carry him, put him in the back of his ranger. Like, okay, great, wonderful, fantastic. I'm laughing right now. But at the time, this is like the weird, eh, not even the weirdest shit I've ever been through, but weird shit. Get him in the back of the ranger. I'm like, okay, so what do we do with the goats? He's like, I'll take care of them. Um, you go inside. And I go inside and I'm expecting to find like an abattoir or, you know, like just nastiness everywhere. And I go inside, I find a couple of journals, take them outside read through them a little bit just so I knew what the hell was going on and that's how I learned about basically he was trying to revivify but was instead reanimating and did it like thousands of times long enough to drive the goats mad um, and the plan to become a god by being like a god having the gods things and then a bunch of stuff about how lottery he should have won um, because the odds are always one in 2.45 million and every single time it should be more and yeah <laughs> nuts <laughs> absolutely nuts and something about why would you drink dr pepper hot i don't know you ever had it it's actually pretty good anyways just a bunch of random scribblings occasional note on what he was trying to do I'm reading those as I'm walking down the laneway. And the goats are now in the back of the truck. And I don't know how he lifted them solo, because those were heavy-ass goats. But yeah, literally just tossed them in the back of the truck. Necromancer's trussed up like a Christmas turkey. Um, thrown in the back of the truck, two goats on the other side. He's transferred his sack up to the front. And I'm like, okay, um... Well, tingling, tingling. Okay, pull up my cell phone, look at it, and it's basically everything's all clear. Hand everything off to the local expert. Okay, 
very rare I do that, by the way. I think I got told to do that like three, maybe four times in my experience. Hand him the, the journals. And wish him my very how do you do and turn around and drive into town and find a motel for the freaking night. That's it. Never see Nick again. Never see his red truck. It's a very nice little truck. I, I have an affinity for Rangers. My grandpa used to drive a blue one. I think we literally called it Old Blue. I think we called every single blue truck his Old Blue. Um, and yeah, I slept the night and then drove back. And like It's not a super long drive, but the whole time just wondering what the hell was going on. Now, I know I've got someone asking, what the hell does this have to do with Christmas? The only reason this even popped into my head is Yule Goats. Um, I, I saw somebody had put out some Yule Goats, and that's literally queued it up. Oh, Yule Goats. I have a story that happened right around Christmas time and involved goats. So, yeah, that's it. At least, you know, salmon, zombie, Santa. Bleh. And no tompe fucking up my arm. So, by the way, remember your traditions. <laughs> Just remember your traditions. If that story taught you anything, remember your traditions. And uh, Nick, if you're out there in your little red truck with your sack and your nice little jacket and everything like that, hope you're having a great Christmas. And for everyone else, Merry Christmas. We'll see y'all later. Bye.